Hi guys, this is Pestilli and welcome to another Escape from Tarkov video. In this video, I am covering the Jaeger task line for all of Escape from Tarkov. If you're after a specific task, you can go down to the description and jump straight ahead via the timeline stamps. If there are any minor changes, I'll have them down in the pin post down below. Otherwise, if there's major changes or new tasks added, I will make an entire new video and you'll find a link to that in the description and the pin post down below. So guys, without further ado, let's crack straight into it. I just want to reiterate that you unlock Jagervine Mechanic after you complete Gunsmith Part 1 and the Task Introduction. Make sure you check out that guide if you need more information on that. Acquaintance. For this task, you're required to get 5 Iskra Lunchboxes, 6 Amelia Rye Croutons, and 3 Delicious Beef Cans. Now, these items can be purchased from the flea market and you don't need to find them in raid. The best places you can find these are in duffel bags or in the ration bunker boxes underneath reserve, can be in the new area or underneath the train station where there's plenty of these inside the cages. You will require keys to unlock them, however. But anywhere pretty much food spawns in the map, you can get these. There are a couple of barter trades that do change over time for these items as well. Moving on to the survivalist path. First task is unprotected but dangerous. For this one, you're required to go into woods and kill five scabs whilst not wearing body armor. My tactic for this one is actually to wear body armor and go into woods. However, every time you see a scav, use a long range rifle, being a Mosin with a sight or any gun with a sight. PSOs on SKSs work well as well. And take off your armor, shoot the scav, put your armor back on. So you're always picking off scavs that you know you can easily kill from range, but you can just take your armor off and put it back on and you'll be able to complete this task in no worries. The scav spawn in the usual locations on woods that I've spoken about before, being the lumber mill and the scav house. You can also check spine or the rock area, and then as you move towards the RUAF extract, they're uh, over that way too. The next task, thrifty. For this task, you're required to go into woods again and take in two Iskra MREs, as well as two bottles of water. After you have these four items, you need to go to the ZB014 and ZB016 bunkers. Once you're inside the bunkers, you go to the back left-hand corner and you can place these items down. The ZB014 bunker is located on the scav house side of the map. If you hug the far right-hand side wall from the scav house and head straight down, you will find this bunker quite easily. The ZB016 is on the UN road side of the uh, map. However, it is located not too far away from the plane crash in the direction of the UN road extract. The next task on the survivalist path is Zivchik. For this one, you have to dehydrate yourself for five minutes in raid. This needs to be a continuous five minutes of dehydration. Once you get into a raid and your hydration goes down to zero, the five minute counter starts. The easiest way to do this with no worries whatsoever is to get dehydrated and then pop a propital stimulant. This one heals over time. It's one health per second and it will heal faster than the dehydration will damage you. And you can just play out the raid normally for those five minutes. After the five minutes is up, drink some water and then just survive the raid and you can hand this in. If you are dehydrated for five minutes and then you die, you can just finish any raid after that and you'll have the survival of a raid complete and you'll be able to hand it in. The survivalist path, wounded beast. For this task, you're required to kill four scavs whilst under the pain effect. The easiest way to do this task, in my opinion, is just to continue playing the game normally. And when a scav shoots you and you take damage, you'll be affected by pain and then you can just shoot, like kill them back. And you'll just get these done quite quickly just by playing the game normally. However, if you are trying to rush doing it, I would highly suggest going into factory and uh, charging around and killing all the scavs towards the end. And as you're taking damage, you will be able to kill the scavs quite quickly. This is easily the fastest way of doing it. However, you shouldn't have too many problems getting this task done just playing the game normally. The Survivor's Path, tough guy. For this task, you're required to go into woods and kill four scavs in a single raid without using any medication. This includes stimulants, painkillers, any healing, splints, any of it. So you can't use any of them. Very similar to going into the raid and doing the killing the scavs with the uh, not wearing armor, I would highly suggest trying to get a long range sight and then just cruising around the edge of the map and killing scavs as you see them. Once you kill the four scavs, survive and extract the raid. If you are taking damage, look at how much health you're losing per minute and the potential you could just keep running out without healing and uh, being able to complete the quest that way. But just be careful, this one does require a little bit of luck to get it done. The survivalist path, cold blooded. For this one, you are required to kill three PMCs with headshots while having a tremor. This is one of the most common questions I get about a task and the easiest way to do it is to die in a raid 
and have a broken arm or leg, preferably a broken arm. Now, when you have that broken arm, in the heal screen at the end of a raid, check to see what ones you want to heal. Heal everything on the body besides the broken arm. From there, put on your best gear and go into factory. Once you're within factory, wait 40 seconds. It's about 40 to 45 seconds, and you'll have the tremor pop up. So having a broken limb for 40 seconds will give you that tremor. Then all you need to do from there is pop any sort of painkiller, so it could be a golden star, or a painkiller, morphine, any of them, and you won't even have any of the effects of having the tremor, and then just play factory like normal, trying to kill three PMCs with headshots. That is easily the fastest way you can do it, and this is the tra tactic that I use. You could use these on any map, but getting a broken arm is easily the best way to do it. The Survivor's Path Junkie. Now, with this one, you're required to kill 20 scabs on woods while having a stimulant effect. Propital uh, counts as a stimulant or an SJ6. They're the best two, in my opinion. The SJ6 will make you run around faster and, and be able to get around the map quicker so you can kill scabs faster. The propital will just be able to heal you over time and works as a painkiller. So use which one you want to use, uh, but propital is definitely a lot cheaper. Now, at the time of me recording this task, unless they've fixed it, this was actually working on every single map. So you didn't just have to do it on woods. So if you were to pop a propital and go into interchange and kill scabs on there, you would get uh, the kills counted towards this task. However, Check the date of this video and it's probably been fixed by the time you watch this. The Survivor's Path Combat Medic. Now this one requires you to get level five Vitality skill and Vitality is leveled by taking damage. There is a way you can speed up getting this task done and it's a later task by Jaeger called Ambulance, which you might have at the exact same time, which requires you to find in raid a portable defibrillator and two CMS surgical kits. When you hand that quest in, you will get the plus ones to skills in Vitality. So I would highly suggest waiting till you're level four in Vitality before handing in that task. Huntsman Path Secured Perimeter. Now on this task, you are required to kill eight PMCs in factory in the office area. Now the office area includes the stairwells on both ends and the bathroom level, as well as the top level as well. So you don't have to be in any particular spot within the actual area, just anywhere of that whole complete complex. I would highly suggest working to your strengths here, but any of the guns that have really high damage or very fast firing rates is where you're gonna get the best success here. Personally, I like to hang out in the office with the doors open, other people would like to have them closed. Also bathroom area, if you know your angles, you can work in here really well to get these kills done very quickly. Huntsman Path, the trophy. For this one, you need to kill Rishala on customs and get his golden TT found in raid and survive an extract. Now, if you kill Rishala in an earlier raid and get his golden TT and, and get out of the raid, you can hold on to it for this task. And this is what I would highly suggest doing. So if you do see Rishala in the process of playing the game, definitely try and get the kill, get the golden TT, and then make sure you extract as quickly as possible. Once you have that golden TT, put it aside and hold it on for this quest, because when you're on this quest, it seems to be one of the hardest things to ever get done, just because of RNG, really. However, you will need to kill Rashala whilst you're on this quest. Now, Rashala spawns at both three-story dorms, two-story dorms, and the new gas station on customs. He has four minions, and the minions are more damaging and scary than him himself. Thankfully, most of his minions use BT ammo. So if you actually have class five or six armor, you will be able to tank a fair few bullets from these minions. And if you go for their heads, unless they've got the Alton on, you should be able to drop these guys pretty quick. Huntsman Path, Woods Cleaning. Now with this task requires to kill 40 scabs on any map, I would just have this task running in the background and not focus on doing it uh, separately. And just over time, getting those 40 scabs. It won't take you too long. Huntsman Path Controller. For this one, you are required to kill two PMCs blinded with a flashbang. Now, I would personally go into factory with this, taking a shitload of flashbangs and just keep throwing it until you know someone's flashed and then killing them. If you can find a pistoling, it makes it really easy. An alternative method is to play the game normally, have a flashbang inside your container, wait till you see a hatchling or a pistoling running around, tell them to cease fire, make them stand still, then throw the flashbang at them and then kill them if you want to do it down that way. It's a bully tactic, but hey, that's what they get for going in without any gear on. Huntsman Path Sellout. For this one, you're required to kill Killer on Interchange and then get his helmet and extract with it. Now, once you do have his helmet and survive the raid and hand it in, you don't need to have the face shield on to hand it in. So I'd highly suggest taking the face shield off because it will save you some money. I think it's about 50,000 rubles you can sell it for. And for killing Killer, he spawns down the main path of the center of Interchange and then turn right in front of Kiba and he can spawn down in Generic or the store across from Generic. They just recently fixed the leg stun effect on Killer, so you are gonna have to fight him properly and not just use a cheap full auto gun and stun lock him by shooting him in the legs. So watch out for that now, as he is definitely a challenge. Huntsman Path, Woods Keeper. For this one, you're required to kill Sturman on Woods and 
get a found in raid Sturman's key. Now in the past, it, the key was not required to be found in raid, but now you do need to survive the raid with his key. So when you go into woods and you're around the lumber mill, he'll have his two minions and himself. Once you know the spawn points and where they run around to, it is quite easily to get the kill on him. And then all you need to do is make sure his minions are dead, run up and grab his key, and then get out of the raid. If you do die with the key in your container, don't stress too much about it. It can sell to vendor for a heap of money as well. So it's still worth it in that respect. Huntsman Path Justice. Now this one, you need to kill three scavs that are dressed in police uniform. Now the easiest way I've always done this is by killing Rashalda's minions on customs, but I don't know if other raiders have a police uniform on. To my understanding, the only way that you can get this quest done is by killing Rashalda's minions on customs. Same as killing Rashalda before, go to the new gas, two-story dorms, all the three-story dorms, find him, kill these minions, and then you'll have this quest done. Huntsman Path, Evil Watchman. For this one, you're required to kill seven PMCs in the dorms area on customs. Now with this task, you're not required to kill them inside the dorms, and it's the area in between as well. I've been able to get these done pretty quickly by just straight away running two dorms, sitting around the marked room, and then having all the people come towards me. Sometimes you'll get really lucky and you'll have a large amount of players come at the same time, uh, but can be quite difficult if you're not very good at PVP. Huntsman Path Eraser Part 1. Now this task can be quite difficult for multiple reasons. Glucka has just had his spawn rate increased and it's sitting around the 35 to 40% chance. So you can actually get Glucka to spawn pretty often. The difficulty is on reserve. There's about five different spawns that he can spawn in and I'll have them highlighted on a map right now for you. But in saying that, he has up to six minions with him and they are very aggressive. When you're trying to get him, I would highly suggest going in with 60 round mags because it, just the rate of the minions coming in and attacking you, you will require to get that done or be able to shoot off a large amount of enemies at the same time. Alternatively, you can snipe these guys from distance when you have the chance. It just depends on where they spawn. Huntsman Path Eraser Part 2. Now these raiders can be the ones from reserve or also labs. And I would personally just go to labs to get this done nice and quickly. I would go into labs, press the button, and then get the raiders to spawn and start killing them. I know there's a lot of issues at the moment with people going into labs and having issues with other, let's say, really good gaming chairs. So if you are having issues with this, go into reserve, flick the lever straight away, and it should have a pretty good chance of spawning raiders by the train station, or you can go press the new power button underneath and have a chance to spawn raiders as well, and then you'll be able to kill raiders on this map. Usually the raiders spawn around the train station on reserve. Ambulance. For this one, you are required to find a portable defibrillator and two CMS surgical kits found in raid and hand them in. For meds, I would highly suggest searching all the med spawns that were spoken about previously in other guides, but the med building on reserve, you can also go to the resort on shoreline, or you can go into Emicon or Mantis on interchange as a pretty good chance to get meds. If you want to go into labs, the green, blue, and black rooms are pretty good for meds as well. However, they're quite risky to try and get into. If you're after defibrillators, the ultra medical room on interchange is a really good spawn chance for a defibrillator. Otherwise, you're looking at most likely going into labs and going into the green or blue rooms to find defibrillators in there. Shady business. For this task, you're required to hand in three found in raid flash drives. Now, I've spoken about flash drives before with uh, skier and hopefully you will understand where all the spawns are but i'll quickly go over them again just in case you're unsure woods has a tent that has a pretty good spawn chance and can spawn up to two on customs you're looking behind two-story dorms there's a tent there where there's a guitar and a duffel bag underneath the guitar you can spawn one and next to the duffel bag between the duffel bag and the log the usb van out the front of factory seven has a very good chance of spawning in there room 110 in the two-story dorms has a chance of one spawning on the bed otherwise all the computers within interchange or anywhere on any of the maps besides labs can have usb drives hanging out the front of them Courtesy visit. For this one, you're required to go to three houses on the shoreline map. When you get to shoreline, you want to head towards the swamp. The three houses are the one located above the church, uh, up on the high ground, which is the same one for Cult Part 1 in the Peacekeeper storyline. The second one is located the greenhouse that's isolated away from the swamp and has lots of barter trade spawns. It's one of the better buildings in Shoreline to be looting whenever you go past it. And the final one is from the greenhouse looking towards the swamp in the direction of the church. If you look at the far left house of the swamp, so you go to the go directly towards the swamp, run to the left, and you'll be able to get to it quite easily from there. 
nostalgia. For this one, you're required to go into Shoreline and go into the West Wing. It's located in West Wing Room 303 and you don't require a key to get into it. Once you go inside the room, head to the other side of the bed in the chest of drawers, you'll be able to see it in the bottom drawer. Fishing place. For this one, you're required to hand in three found in raid labs key cards. You can get labs key cards from killing any of the scav boss. They also spawn in the backpack of scavs and also the pockets. They have a very small chance of spawning in fine cabinets as well. And there is a chance you can get one to spawn in Sturm and stash on woods. Now these need to be found in raid so you can't buy the ones off therapist or off the flea market to hand these in. Hunting trip. For this task, you're required to make three M700 sniper rifles. Now, any of the tasks that require you to make guns do sometimes change, but what I'll do is I'll put on the screen all the items required to make the M700 rifle to hand them in. You do need to find three of them. I would also suggest making this a preset so future wipes you don't need to worry about that. And I actually have a video with all the presets that I would recommend for a wipe, being all the gunsmith tasks and this gun. So you should uh, definitely check out that video if you haven't already. I'll put a link down below to the gunsmith presets and including this one. Reserve. For this task, you're required to go into the reserve map and head into the bunker underneath the train station. From there, you'll see the four cages. You just need to run to the back right cage. Might even be other places, but it always seems to happen to me as soon as I go near that one. And you'll have the food storage completed. And all you need to do is survive the raid and extract to hand it in. Now moving over to the Tarkov Shooter series. With this, it used to be on Mechanic and it's been moved over to Jaeger. So there's eight tasks for this series. The Shooter Part 1. For this one, you're required to kill eight scars over 40 meters away with a Mosin rifle without a scope. Personally, the easiest way I find doing this is on Shoreline, going down that center line from New Gas to Power Station to Bus Depot, and you should be able to get all eight scav kills fairly quickly, if not in the first raid. You can do this on any map, but that's the one I would highly suggest. When shooting a Mosin rifle, just use LPS GCH rounds as they do enough damage to one-shot someone in the chest. So with scavs, it's quite easy because most of them don't wear armor. And then on top of that, it's a good way of practicing and getting your aim up on your Mosin rifles. Tarkov Shooter Part 2. For this task, you're required to get three hits in the legs from over 60 meters away with a Mosin, as well as two headshots from over 60 meters away with a Mosin. Use a PU site. You can get this done fairly easily. I would highly suggest deliberately leg shotting scavs first and then finishing them up with a headshot. Once again, I usually do this one on wood whilst I'm getting some Peacekeeper tasks done. Type of shooter part three. Kill four PMC operators with a Mosin at close range, less than 25 meters. With this task, I find a lot of people have a lot of issues trying to get the range right. The easiest way I've found this one to work is on factory. And I would pretty much just go around the office area like in the previous task we've spoken about. And I would use a Mosin just nice and cheap and I'd get used to hip firing it very quickly. You can hip fire or ADS. If you creep around like a rat, you can actually get this done pretty quickly as well just by sneaking up on people and mosing them close range. Tarkov Shooter Part 4. For this one requires you to get sniper rifle skill level 4. And the way sniper rifle skills level is by chambering around. So reloading a Mosin will give 0.1 of a skill point. Or every time you hit a target, you get 0.6 of a skill point. Now, a lot of people will go into a raid and just continually reload over and over again. And it's only effective for, the, for about 15 reloads. And then after that, you're pretty much wasting your time doing it. So I would suggest only doing this every now and then just to slowly, cheekily level it up. On average, in a raid, you're only going to get about three skill points before it's not going to level up anymore due to diminishing returns, unless you don't use that skill for five minutes. So if you did want to reload, wait five minutes and then reload again, that would work. But I would highly suggest just doing it properly by just going in with a sniper off and shooting stuff because it really only takes about five to six hits until you've already hit the maximum diminishing returns. Tarkov Shooter Part 5. For this one, you need to kill 10 scavs on customs with a Mosin Rough between 2100 and 0500. Now, scavs on customs are most easily found in dorms or new gas. However, if you actually take your time in dorms, they do start spawning all through construction and in other areas over time. So what I would suggest is actually play customs nice and slow during this time period, take in a night vision, and you should be able to get this done pretty much in one raid. Always keeping an eye out for the sniper scavs because it's also going to be very handy for the next task. Tarkov Shooter Part 6. For this one, you need to kill seven sniper scavs with a Mosin. Now, you could do this task on any map, but I'd highly suggest doing this on customs due to the fact that there's five sniper scavs there. First one's located above construction on the big warehouse. The next one is located on the chimney in the middle of the map, nice and high up. 
The third one is located on a building above where you play at Chemical Part 4. The fourth one is located on the checkpoint, uh, just on that little tower at checkpoint. And the fifth one is located in the hills behind checkpoint and is unlootable as well. It's just up there and he just kind of just hangs around up there. He's not there very often, but he is up there. Now, if you don't like customs, you do have other options. You could kill the sniper scav on the power station on shoreline, the sniper scav on woods on top of Pride Rock or whatever you want to call it, the big rock in, in the middle of the map. And then hopefully those will be able to get you out of the uh, trouble. But honestly, customs is the fastest way you'll get this done. Tarkov Shooter Part 7. Kill five PMC operators with suppressed Mosin at least 55 meters away. Now, this one I'd like to get done at St. Thomas Shooterborn in Heaven, uh, so which is a mechanic task. But what I would do is I'd get a scoped Mosin and put a suppressor on it, and I'd just start trying to do my Shooterborn in Heaven headshots. That way, you're already trying to go over 100 meter headshots, and it's not too difficult to get both done at the same time. Um, and then personally, just go into positions where you're going to set yourself up for long range shots. Now, I have a guide for Shooterborn in Heaven, and uh, I'll make sure there's a link down below for that one as well giving positions on where I would highly suggest going for each map to get Shooter Board in Heaven done, but you can easily use it for these long-range PMC kills. Tark of Shooter Part 8. Kill three PMC operators with a motion over one raid in woods. Now, I would highly suggest this one taking it a little bit more blasé, because what happens is when wood starts, there's a lot of action early on, and then you're really trying to struggle to find all the PMC operators and not have them kill other people at the same time. So my strategy with this one is when I spawn in, I immediately run towards where I know other people are spawning and try and get an early kill. Once you have that early kill, it's really just the woods raid where you need to get two more PMC kills. If you try and play it slow from the start, generally a lot of the PMCs get killed early on and that, then the best way you're going to get this kill done or three kills done is to find a three man, which on woods is a very difficult task to be able to find them and survive the actual kills when trying to kill them with a Mosin. So my suggestion with that is go into woods, immediately push towards spawns where you know a player is most likely going to spawn and try and get an early kill, and then the rest of the raid should be pretty straightforward. So guys, thanks for watching another video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. It really does help out for the YouTube algorithm. I'm trying to put out all these task guides as quickly as possible, but if you are after any other guides for me, um, go down below, hit up the description. There should be all the other trader tasks, as well as you can subscribe and hit the notification bell for the latest information that I am putting out for Escape from Tarkov. If you've got any Tarkov questions, you can feel free to hit me up on my live stream. I do stream on Twitch every day of the week, so you can go down the link below over there. Otherwise, hit me up in the comments. I try my best to reply to as many as possible. Lastly, guys, I'll see you next time.